Eclipse has a special set of rules when it comes to subsuming it onto other frames or even some abilities onto Mirage. But why? Eclipse is a very strange ability because it can do two very different things depending on whether your Warframe is standing in a bright area or in a dark area. In a bright area you get upwards of 200% bonus weapon damage and in a dark area you get up to 75% damage reduction and you reduce the accuracy of enemies firing at you by 75% as well. All of this is affected by power strength though the damage reduction is capped at 95%. The downside of Eclipse is that it's somewhat out of your control as it is dependent on the environmental lighting. There's still some funky stuff that can happen like if you get set on fire with a heat proc that will give you maximum illumination, but a lot of the cheeky stuff you could do with graphical settings to increase the illumination in the game as much as possible doesn't work anymore. Though on the other hand, they also fixed all of the bad stuff because some graphical options would actively make Eclipse worse. This was mostly a problem in the Plains of Eidolon during the night for Eidolon Hunts because the moonlight is supposed to be bright enough to give you maximum damage bonus from Eclipse, but with certain graphical settings it wouldn't actually do that. From what I've read, you can still notice a bit of a disparity depending on your graphical settings, but it's very minimal and basically not noticeable at all. So that's pretty much how Eclipse works, now let's talk about why it's so bloody strong. Well first of all, the strength scaling on Eclipse is very good. Every percent of strength gives you 2% extra maximum damage you can get from it. So using something as simple as Intensify takes your potential maximum weapon damage from 200% to 260%. I mean just a fully stacked mod augmented which provides 60% power strength will give you 320% weapon damage. This is kind of necessary though since you don't get the full benefit of Eclipse at all times, though when you do get the full benefit of it, it is very strong. Another reason why Eclipse is so good is because it can be turned into an aura with the total Eclipse augment. This makes Eclipse affect all allies within 15 meters of you which can be pushed higher with power range. There's also a bit of a quirk here because Eclipse states that it affects weapon damage, right? Well, Total Eclipse actually affects Landslide, Antimatter Drop, Radio Javelin and Peacemaker. So if you thought Peacemaker was strong, well now imagine it with 400 plus percent more damage. And finally, the biggest one at number 3, Eclipse is a completely separate multiplier. It's not genetic damage, it's not faction damage, it's just weapon damage. And the best way to scale damage in Warframe is to just use as many different multipliers as possible. This is why they put in this restriction on Helminth. If you want to subsume something like Rhino's Roar onto Mirage, you have to subsume it over Eclipse. And vice versa. Because if they didn't put in this restriction, you'll be able to get multiplicative damage scaling on your Warframe alone. Which is crazy, because if you look at an example where we take a weapon that does 100 damage and we buff ourselves with Eclipse and Subsumed Roar with no power strength, the weapon goes from doing 100 damage to 390 damage. Now that might not seem too crazy, but the second we put in Serration, the weapon starts doing 1033.5 damage. Let's add Elemental Mods for good measure, 290% Elemental Mods will take it to 2893.8 as opposed to 2226 if we remove Roar, or 742 if we also remove Eclipse. Look at the damage difference this makes, and that's not even a fully modded weapon, and we're not running any extra power strength. This is why if you want to subsume Roar, Vex Armor, Amp or Zata's Whisper on Mirage, you have to subsume them over Eclipse. It's also a very easy ability to keep up, it costs 25 energy at base, which is nothing, and the base duration is 25 seconds, which isn't too shabby either. It's why it's a very popular ability to subsume onto Warframes where you just need a little bit more damage, because you don't need that much, just don't nuke your duration and you're good. You don't quite get the full benefit of it when you subsume it onto another frame, the base damage bonus is 150% as opposed to 200% and the damage reduction is capped at 75% rather than 95%. The main difference between subsuming Eclipse and something like Roar is that Eclipse isn't very reliable because it relies on the lighting but it also only works on weapons, whereas Roar provides a much lesser multiplier but it's very reliable universal faction damage that works on everything, so guns and abilities. Though one thing I want to point out here is that exalted weapons are indeed weapons, so they are affected by Eclipse. Also, since Roar provides universal faction damage, it's really good for damage over time builds like Slash, Heat, Electricity, Gas, Toxin, that kind of stuff, because it double dips in the calculation, whereas the damage bonus from Eclipse is only applied once. So please, don't just default to Eclipse whenever you want to subsume something onto your frame to get more damage. Think about it a little bit, do you want a really easy to upkeep weapon damage that will fluctuate between amazing and not so amazing? Go for Eclipse. 
But if you don't mind having less universal faction damage that's reliable and works on everything, go for Roar instead. Because with Eclipse you have to expect some sort of fluctuation. And you can approach it in two different ways. You can either just turn Eclipse on and be like, eh, I get what I get. Or you can actively try to look for the brightest areas in the maps to get the most damage. Some people will enjoy option A, others option B. Also, I know I'm mostly focusing on the damage bonus side of Eclipse, but the defensive side is really good as well. You just need to get used to it. Whenever you're taking a lot of damage, you need to look for a dark area and basically hide in the shadows. And before we wrap it all up, I have one final tip for you Mirage players. You might want to use Total Eclipse even if you play solo. Because your doppelgangers from Hall of Mirrors don't get the benefit of your Eclipse. Unless that is, you're running Total Eclipse, because the doppelgangers are considered allies. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the video, so I thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and if there is anything else you would like to add to this, feel free to leave a comment down below. Then I would also like to extend a special thank you to all the channel members, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate your support, it means a lot to me, and if you would like to become a channel member as well, by the way, you can check out the memberships and stuff down below. And I'll see you next time, bye bye.